So today we will be looking at uh, the Simpson's one third rule of numerical integration. Okay, uh, so uh, if we talk about the previous uh, uh, method of numerical integ integration, which was the trapezoidal method, what we did was we tried to uh, approximate the area under the curve with a trapezoid. Right. So what you can think of that as approximating this curve by a first order polynomial. Uh, why the first order polynomial? Because we approximated this curve as a line joining these two endpoints, right? And then we found out the area of the uh, we found out the area under this trapezoid, which is formed by approximating this curve as a line. So what we do there is uh, we approximate the curve as a first order polynomial. Some a x plus b, right? What we do here, or you can call call this as uh, a naught plus a one x, right? Uh, so we already did that. We we already uh, used trapezoidal method, and we uh, wrote a code for it in Octave. Uh, Simpson's one third rule is a better is a better, um, much more accurate. Uh, method of calculating the uh, integration numerically. What we do there is uh, we approximate the curve as a second order polynomial. So we approximate, approximate it as a naught plus a one x plus a two x square. By second order polynomial, I mean that. Excuse me. Uh, in the earlier one, we were approximating it with a line. Here, what we do is we approximate it with a curve, somewhat like this, right? So here uh, we needed two points. Here, how many points would we need to approximate a curve or to define a curve? We would need three points, right? Because we have three unknowns here: a naught, a one, and a two. So the third point is somewhere here. So here we need three points to approximate this curve. So let's see how we can derive an equation for the Simpson's one third rule, where we approximate the curve as a second order polynomial. And then we, we find out the area under this, right? Okay, that is how we calculate the, uh, that is how we perform the integration numerically. Okay, so you have this second order polynomial which approximates the given curve. Right, so this is what I've written. Just confirming. Okay. So how do you figure out these values? A not a one, a two. So you have three unknowns. So it would be better if we had three equations. Then we could solve them simultaneously and get our values of three unknowns. But how do we get three equations? So you have you have this function, right? This function, the blue one, defined by f of x. Right. So what you can do is. You try out, you figure out the value of uh, uh, you figure out the value of the uh, function at these points. So you can write this as sorry. so you can write it as uh, a naught plus a one a plus a2 a square and this value should be equal to what it should be equal to f of a right what is this this is f of a this is f of this is f of c and this is f of b right so these at these points the value of your function should match with the value of the polynomial. So similarly, you can have another equation which is f of b a naught plus a one b plus a two b square, and then you can have another one f of c a naught plus a one c plus a two c square. Right. So these values are known, right? Because you know the function, so you know this value, and you know. Uh, you know a, uh, you know b, 
you also know f of p you also know f of c right so the unknowns are a naught a1 and a2 and you have three equations you can solve these three simultaneously to get the value of a naught a1 and a2 uh, we take c as to b in between a and b so c is a plus b by 2 okay so now you now you can uh, define this excuse me so now you can define this polynomial which approximates your given curve because we know a0 a1 and a2 now so once you have that you can find out the integration so a b your uh, what you need to find out is this but now you have approximated that f of x as a second order polynomial which is p of x right this f of x can be anything it can be sin square x or anything but you are approximating it with a second order polynomial and you know the form of the second order polynomial now you know the constants as well uh, so this is what a naught plus a one x plus a two x square dx integrated between a and b what would this be a naught x a one x square by two plus a two x cube by three right and uh, eventually then this would be uh, b minus a plus a one b square minus a square plus a two b cube minus a cube right and you know you also know the value of a naught a one and a two i'm not going to derive that here but if you solve this you can get the value of a naught a one and a two in terms of f of a f of t f of c and a b c right if you solve this you would get the values of a naught a one and a two in terms of the knowns the knowns are f of a f of b f of c and a b c which are not done here so uh, okay how do i add a page i think uh, it's here okay so when you do that when you uh, substitute the values of a naught a one and a two you eventually get this the integration approximated as h by 3 so h is um, e minus a by 3 times f of a plus 4 times f of a plus b by 2 that's f of c plus f of p so when you carry out all the steps you end up with this approximation so this is your Simpson's one third rule when you have when you have two sub intervals, right? This is one inter one sub interval. This is another sub interval. Sometimes what happens is that uh, these uh, two sub intervals are not enough to approximate a given curve because the curve may not be very smooth. It may be quite oscillatory, right? And if the interval is quite large, only two sub intervals will not be enough. So what you do there is you make use of the composite composite Simpson's one third rule. So I'm not going to derive it here. You can uh, what I suggest is you look it up in Wikipedia. So. Uh, Simpsons one third. Sim okay, Simpsons one third rule. So okay, this is a PDF. What I recommend is you go to the Wikipedia page. All right. So here you can look at the composite Simpson's rule and it is given as this right h by 3 where h is uh, b minus a uh, this particular thing right so uh, if you want to uh, if you want to calculate for only uh, two sub intervals you can use this function which uh, with this equation which I have defined but if you want a general Simpson rule for n intervals and remember these n sub intervals they have to be an even number right because you need uh, points 
at these three so you get these three points when you have two sub intervals so only when you have an even number of sub intervals you would be able to use the simpson's rules so simpson's one third rule so remember this is an important point that you need an even number of sub intervals to carry out the simpson's one third uh, numerical integration so let us now uh, implement this particular equation in octave if you uh, if you do this for two sub intervals, you end up with this equation. So instead of uh, you know implementing this, we would it would be better to implement a general rule, which is this. Okay, so let us uh, start up octave. Let's start with the uh, uh, programming part. Okay, I'm going to call my file sim simpson one three dot m. I'm going to write a function directly this time. I will not be writing a script and then a function. So the function, it returns a value of i, which is the calculated value of the integration. Uh, the name of the function has to be same as the name of the file, which is Simpson13. It takes in the function that you want to integrate and the interval uh, values. Okay, uh, the first thing that we need to do is to figure out the step size, which is h, which is b minus a. Um, b minus a okay it's divided by n all right so you need n also and i think i made a mistake here uh, okay so this is actually let me rewrite this quickly okay i need to attach my uh, vacuum tablet first just wait for a second okay so what i need to do is uh, this is this is in fact h by 3 where h is b minus a by 2 so here we had two sub intervals so h was b minus a by 2 for n sub intervals h is b minus a by n okay so that thing that i have to do i hope it's still recording So uh, now what do we do is uh, we have the value of h then we need to uh, write this function right we need to write this one and how do we do it using a vectorized form so th there are certain things that you that you need to understand here we first need x values at all the uh, at all the nodes or at all the points within the uh, within the function so we need to define an x vector that goes from a with a step size of h to b so how many points will be there in this since there are n sub intervals there will be n plus 1 points where x is defined and we need to find out the value of the function at all those n plus 1 points so one thing which uh, is different in this equation is that uh, the first point is referred to as x of 0 or x naught so the index goes from 0 to n so when you count something from 0 to n you have n plus 1 values so if you count something from 0 to 2 let's say you have 0 1 2 so that is actually three values right in total zeroth value first value second value so here uh, the index or the subscript is going from 0 to n so you in, in reality you have n plus 1 values in matlab you cannot have a subscript of 0 or you cannot have an index of 0 in matlab your index starts from 1 so i would need to convert this function uh, wherein the subscript goes from 1 to n plus 1 so it's simple enough i just need to add plus 1 to all these subscript values so this will become x1 this will become x 2j plus 1 this will become x 2j minus 1 plus 1 so just that's 2j and this will become x n plus 1 if i do that i'll be able to convert this into a form which can be written in, in matlab so let me write this using vectorized form okay h by 3 the first thing is f of x of 1 right so let me open this up side by side okay that's the first one f of x of 1 plus where did it go where is it where is it huh. Huh, here it is okay the f of x of 1 plus 2 times 
plus 2 times sum of f of it's 2j so the first value is j equals 1 so 2j is uh, 2 and uh, 2 but I have to write 2j plus 1 so for me the first index is 3 so it goes from f of x mm. of 3 let me write it again so that I don't make mistakes in the brackets so f of x of 3 uh, it goes till n by 2 minus 1 so <clears throat> 2 times n by 2 minus 1 is okay it's multiply this by 2 so that will be n minus 2 and I have to add plus 1 so n minus 2 plus 1 is n minus 1 so this will be n minus 1 okay that makes sense plus 4 times sum of f of x of right this goes from 2j minus 1 and initially a j is 1 so this is 2 minus 1 plus 1 so 2 minus 1 plus 1 is 2 right it goes till n by 2 so 2 into n by 2 is uh, n right n minus 1 plus 1 so again that's just n uh, yeah so, and uh, finally I have f of x of n here but here it should be f of x of n plus 1 right so I think this should all make sense to you now I think I missed a bracket here right hopefully this will give a, a correct value let me uh, save it let me open up octave uh, so let me define a function sine of uh, okay x cube right let me use the inbuilt function of MATLAB to calculate the integral so one between one and four 63.75 let's use our own function so simpson 1 4 let's use 110 right so i'm getting 104 let's increase the number of sub intervals 124 there seems to be something wrong it's 127 if i do this it seems to be twice of the value that we are getting okay so there's some mistake so let's get back the first thing the first mistake is that I'm printing out these values which I don't need to uh, okay, let me just compare it with this okay so okay it seems that the mistake I've made is uh, uh, here uh, every second value of uh, the function is taken while summing up right x 2 j so for 1 it's 2, for 2 it's 4, for 3 it's 6 and here I'm taking all the values in between these two ends so even I would I need to jump to every second value so that I can do that by specifying the step size of 2 similarly here and now it should probably work yeah and if I compare it with the uh, analytical solution okay this works so remember if you don't give a in our function if you don't provide an even number your answer will not be very correct right it will not be uh, it will not be uh, that good so it's uh, it's necessary that you provide an even number of sub intervals as well for example sine of x square plus cos of x and integrate that so again you can use the inbuilt function to check what you're doing is correct or not it gives this value let's use our own function all right so as you can see this works for other functions as well so this was the simpsons one third rule so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one